I want to talk about convertible securities. Convertible securities are fixed income securities that allow the holder to convert the security into a specified number of shares of the issuing company stock. And this can be in the form of convertible bonds or convertible preferred stock. Why does a company issue convertible bonds, for example? Well, it gives them the opportunity to borrow money at a much lower interest rate. Why? Because they're giving these bondholders the opportunity to benefit should the stock price go up. So people are willing to pay for some of that upside by accepting a lower interest rate. A number of years ago, Amazon.com, when they were a relatively new company, issued convertible bonds. Why did they do this? Well, as a young company, they would have had to pay a very, very high interest rate because they were a risky, they were a risky company to bet on. So by issuing the convertible bonds, they were able to borrow money at a low rate because people were willing to accept the upside that if the stock went up, they'd make some money off of that. So except that they accepted a much lower interest rate. Now here's some terminology. Conversion privilege gives you the conditions under which the, uh, the convertible security can be converted. You have a conversion period. Okay, there may be a specific time period during which a convertible issue can be converted. You have a conversion ratio that tells you the number of shares of common stock into which a convertible issue can be converted. And you have a conversion price, the stated price per share at which common stock will be delivered to the investor in exchange for a convertible issue. What we're interested in is some of the sources of value of convertibles. Okay, If you think about it, the value of a convertible is based both on the value of the stock and the value of the bond because it's both a stock and a bond to some degree. When the price, when the market price of the uh, stock is close to the conversion price, you would expect the you would expect the uh, convertible bond to trade much like a common stock because people are likely to convert. On the other hand, if the convertible has a price, a market price that is well below the conversion price, then it's not likely that it's going to be converted. So if the market price of the stock is way below the conversion price, it's not likely to be converted. So it's going to act much more like a bond. So essentially, one of the reasons that people buy convertible bonds is the bond price sets a floor for the um, value of the bond. So if the stock goes belly up, okay, it goes down a lot, you still have the value of this bond. So you have um, a limit on the downside but you have a lot of upside should the stock price go up. All right, let's take a look at some examples here. Conversion value is an indication of what a convertible issue would trade for if it were priced to sell on the basis of its stock value. So for example, the bond has a conversion ratio of 25 and the stock price is 70, then the conversion value is the conversion ratio times the market price of the stock. In this case, it would be $1,750. Sometimes people are interested in the conversion equivalent. That's the price at which the common stock would have to sell in order to make the convertible security worth its present market price. And that's defined to be the current market price of the convertible bond divided by the conversion ratio. So for example, suppose the current price of the convertible is $1,850 and the conversion ratio is 25, then the conversion equivalent is 74. We take the 1850 and we divide it by 25. So you would expect the price of the stock to be trading somewhere around $74 a share. The conversion premium 
can be stated a couple of ways. It can be stated in terms of dollars, or it can be stated in terms of percentage. But in either case, it's basically telling us how much investors are willing to pay over um, the value of the common stock. So the conversion premium in dollars is the current market price of the convertible bond minus the conversion value. The conversion premium in percentage terms is the conversion premium divided by the conversion value. So let's take a look at uh, our previous examples. In the previous example we said the bond is trading for 1850 and we worked out that the conversion value was 1750 so the conversion premium in dollar terms is hundred dollars. People are willing to pay an extra hundred dollars for this privilege of being able to convert. If we look at percentage uh, conversion premium they're willing to pay a hundred dollars over the seventeen hundred and fifty so they're willing to pay uh, five point seven one percent more for the privilege of being able to convert. Okay finally let's take a look at the payback period and that's the length of time it takes for the buyer of a convertible to recover the conversion premium from the extra current income earned on the convertible. If you think about it, you get interest uh, from your convertible bond, that's the bond component, but the stock on the other hand may pay a dividend. So if we take the conversion premium in dollars and divide it by the difference of these two, it tells us how long this payback period is. So suppose the bond as a 6% coupon. Okay, it's a thousand dollar bond, that means it's going to be sixty dollars a year in interest, and suppose the stock pays a fifty cent dividend. Then plugging into that equation, okay, we paid a hundred dollar premium, 25 shares, that's the uh, conversion ratio, times the fifty cent dividend. Okay, we take the sixty dollars in interest income, subtract this which is 1250 okay this total divides into a hundred and it takes about 2.1 years to pay back this um, extra amount using the interest income that we get so convertible securities are a rather interesting security they get um, issued quite often in fact during the financial crisis I believe Warren Buffett bought uh, five billion dollars of Goldman Sachs convertible uh, preferred stock so he could convert it into shares of common stock and one of the advantages there should should Goldman have turned around during the financial crisis Mr. Buffett would have been able to convert his shares into the common stock shares of Goldman Sachs and make a profit from, from that.